Live from the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at AWS reInvent 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsors Amazon and Trend Micro. Welcome back, everyone. You're watching theCUBE. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. We are here live in Las Vegas for Amazon reInvent Conference. I'm John Furrier, here with my co-host, Jeff Kelly from wikibon.org. Our next guest is Jason Kratt, VP of Information Systems at Wilbro's Group, Inc. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, John. So, uh, Trend Micro, great sponsor for us. We really had Mark on earlier. We love having you on, having him on, and, and you're their guest. Um, and Jeff and I love talking to folks in the trenches because at the end of the day, the shows are great, there's good networking, you know, the amenities are good, there's parties going on, but you go back to work, you got to implement stuff. At the end of the day, yeah. that's, when, that's when the rubber hits the road. So <laughs> share with us what's going on in your environment, um, challenges you have, what technology things are now available to you with the cloud, and what, what were you dealing with? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, we, we're a hundred year old company. We've been around since 1907. We've done engineering and pipeline construction for a long, long time. And, uh, and what, what they will tell you, the guys in the field, the welders out there, you don't need a computer to build a pipeline. And, and you don't need a computer or servers or cloud to do anything with what you use. Um, and what we're trying to say at Wilbros is, you know what, that's just not right. Um, there's a lot of contextual information that we can gather and it'll make the whole life cycle of the, of the pipeline or whatever asset we're building that much richer. So we're, we're right now in that phase of getting away from this legacy, on-premise, you know, monolithic environment and pushing it as much as we can into the cloud, right? I, I'm faced with that problem of, do I want to build data centers? I don't want to build data centers. We want to build pipelines. We want to build uh, oil and gas assets or, or any, any energy infrastructure asset, not data centers. And you also want it to be highly valuable in terms of being productive to driving revenue. Oh, right, right. So right. like Internet of Things maybe in your wheelhouse, right? It is, it absolutely is. We, we don't like that, that whole idea of, uh, of focusing on things that are not core to our business. So we're, we're pushing all that to somebody else who does care about it so that we can focus on things that are interesting to us and, all, and that, that matter to us as a core business. All right, so I got to ask the question, what does data-driven pipeline construction mean to you? Right, no, that's exactly <laughs> right. You know, my president, his name's Ed Weigel, he came to me one day and he set, he set his phone on, the, on my desk and he said, you know what, Jason? There are nine Starbucks within a c two city blocks from here. And I said, dude, wh why do I care, <laughs> right? Yeah. I went to Starbucks, I, I'm good. And he said, you know what, we want to ask, we want our, our pipeline companies to ask the same question. How many, how many valves do we have in a square block? In a square mile, in the next, you know, in the next uh, three miles, how many valves? How many compressor stations? How many meter stations? What do we have? How can I see that? It's right now in oil and gas and in any, any energy sector. It's all locked into these GIS systems that are hard to use. They take specialized, you know, knowledge to operate. But yet we can find how many Starbucks or how many Chinese restaurants and which one's good, which one's bad. We can do that right now on our smartphone. So is there a Yelp for valves? Right, that's what we're building, yeah. absolutely. We're, we're building, it's a product called IntegraLink that, that we've built to, to do just that, a Yelp for valves. When was the last inspected? What, uh, what else is interesting about it? When does it need to be replaced? Yeah. Uh, that's exactly where we're going. Well, in the old days, before Jeff jumps in, I want to just get this on the table because you said you're not in the business of building data centers. In the old days, you used to do that. But now, you used to also pull a T1 out to locations back in the day. Right. People might have, might have not know what a T1 is. <laughs> now you got over the air radio frequency with cell phones. So right. the connectivity backhaul problem no goes question. away. No what question. does that do for your IT opportunity? Well, you know what's interesting is it doesn't go away. Uh, uh, there's a new challenge there because you know, pipelines aren't built always in the middle of a metropolitan area. In fact, they often are not. They're through the desert, through uh, the plains of Kansas or Nebraska, mm -hmm. right? So connectivity matters. So if you can't have connectivity to the cloud, the cloud's irrelevant, it's just not a thing. Uh, so, so that's the, one of the primary challenges we see is that, that offline capability, offline online, to make sure you can still sync back up and have that, that repository still available. So if you can't shoot a microwave link to an area, then you're going to have to have store it, upload it, sync. Right. Right, it's the same idea. I mean, yeah. it, this isn't a new challenge, right, John? I mean, it's, it's one of those things that, 
Uh, it's been around forever, but we in the pipeline industry or any energy infrastructure asset, uh, we just we we think it's a new problem. It's, it's not on not. Verizon's top list of metro areas of right. total available <laughs> right. <laughs> revenue per customer. No, you know, it's the not. hinterlands. Wow, well, right. yeah. two workers on the on right. my pipeline. Oh, sorry, Jeff. Right. Go ahead. Well, no. So let's take it a step further. So so you you've got data now. You want to make data available to your customers so they can see. Um, you know, well, what, what does the environment look like around them? Can you elaborate a little bit more on some of the value-add services you can now provide potentially to customers related yeah. to data and, and analysis of that data? Right, there's a lot of an, uh, data analytical problems that we see. You know, one of those is like risk algorithms. You know, these pipelines, if you're going to put something in the ground, it is going to degrade over time. It's just a matter of fact, mm -hmm. right? Uh, God made it that way and we're just going to have to deal with that. So, what we want to, what we do is help help our customers visualize those problems, where they are, when they are, what uh, what when does that asset need to be replaced, mm -hmm. right? And th those processes have been around for a long, long time, right? I mean, in the, in the late '80s, we started developing those those integrity management programs, and 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 th those work really, really well. But the problem is, they take so much time to deliver that. You know, you, you throw a bunch of data at it and you wait a couple days and you get the data back. And, and what we're saying is why, why can't you just know that all the time? You just ask the question, get the result. Mm -hmm. uh, that tends to be more of what the internet, or what, what you expect from the internet, right? Yeah. You just expect, I want an answer. I want to Google that and I got an answer. Right. And, uh, and that's more what we want to do. So now we can, we can drive analytics into our uh, pipeline models to say, look, you need to replace that pipe segment because of you know, corrosion, cracks, mm -hmm. dents, whatever it is. And, and that's the real value. And, and, and it's interesting, you know, you listened to the keynote this morning and uh, we, they talked about you know, driving value minute by minute, or hour by hour, I think is what they said. Uh, we're in the same boat, right? Mm -hmm. Our customers, we don't want to dig up a pipeline if we don't have to, right? It costs so a lot more to do that than to fix more. it before you have to. Right. Yeah. Right, so that there's a lot of mitigating controls we can put around it mm -hmm. uh, for maximal allowing operating pressure, whatever that is, so we can help them extend the life of their asset versus just dig it and replace it. It's yeah. a lot of money. Absolutely, um, you know, in a number of industrial sectors, if you can, you know, one of the, ex the examples I love is the you know an aircraft engine. If you can predict when that is likely to fail, right. fix it ahead of time rather than waiting for it to break, have to take it offline. Exactly. Maybe replace it. I mean, worst case scenario, <laughs> it breaks mid-air, obviously. That's not <laughs> a good case. thing either. Right, so that's a, whole, like that. that's a whole other uh, set of risks. But um, now, so presumably though, you know, pipes don't generally, uh, at least not in the past, didn't come with data generating sensors on them. I'm guessing that uh, that is something you're working on as well oh, to create all this data. Talk a little bit about kind of uh, datafying uh, There's assets There's all sorts like pipes. of, yeah, that's, you're very well put, right? I mean. That, the data just didn't always exist, mm -hmm. right? It, there are certain aspects of the data that did, you know, a, as you put it in, there's a process called as building. When you go and you get geolocation of everything, what is it, where is it, all those things, right? But, but that's only relevant for a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Once it's in the ground, it's in the ground. So there's all sorts of other sensors you want to bring in and ask mm -hmm. questions of that, whether it be inline inspection or SCADA information where you can predictively look at and say, hey, we, we can do something about this problem, mm -hmm. uh, or even just, even if you can't do something about it, knowing there's a problem and, and degrading the service versus just shutting it off, it's a totally different measure for the, the pipeline operators, right? Now they can actually look and say, well, let's just lower the pressure uh, because we see in a SCADA information, we probably should. Mm -hmm. or, or they see in the pipeline integrity report, well, wow, there's, there's an anomaly there, let's go dig it up, let's see what it is, versus just shut it off, right? Mm -hmm. so, so there's a little bit of gray area there where they're able to you know, look at the data and do something about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. so like contextual awareness is, mm. is what we're driving for. Well, you know, another related issue that I'm always interested to talk about with companies that have been all around a long time is how you made this transition from a company that was, you know, the very, you know, the very yeah. traditional business. I mean, you're building pipelines to right. this new world where you're ingesting data, you're creating data services for customers. What was that transition like internally? Was there a lot of um, friction? I mean, you've got people who probably been working there for years and years and are right. reluctant to maybe change the way they work. I mean, that's something we hear from other practitioners. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but no, no I'm doubt. curious, what was that transition like? Well, let's be clear, the transition's not done, right? <laughs> very good. It's one of those very, things, very I mean, it takes point. a long time to, and I hate to, to throw a pun out there, but to reinvent yourself. I mean, <laughs> we, we're in that mode. We understand that, you know, building pipeline assets uh, or any ener energy infrastructure asset, that's not a, that's not, the end all, right? I mean, th mm -hmm. those projects eventually are going to go away, right? And we see that, we're probably 50 years away from that, you know, I'll be retired by then. But what we do see is that 
the need for information and contextual awareness about that is not going away. Mm -hmm. So our leadership said, you know what, we need to start thinking more about that and become this engineering and technology company that also builds pipelines, mm -hmm. that also you know, goes out and builds these assets. Um, so, so it was a conscious decision by our leadership, you know, let's think about really this trend, where we're going, what we're doing, uh, instead of like, let's just keep you know, looking for the bigger and badder pipeline opportunities. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's really interesting when you think about the companies that physically make things and how that's going to be impacted by data. It make, you kind of understand, you know, a Facebook, a LinkedIn, right. you get that. You, you start there. Right, but then when you, when you start applying it to companies that are, you don't think of as data-driven or right. in the data business, um, that's where it really gets interesting. And that's where you start to impact, I mean, you, you're impacting energy. Uh, you could see use cases in healthcare we saw, I think it was Philips and Johnson & Johnson this morning on yeah. the, on the keynote, so it really gets interesting in these other industries that you don't necessarily think of as being data driven, um, at least inherently. No, I totally agree. I saw the Johnson Johnson keynote as well, and, and I draw a lot of corollaries to our business. They're old business. It's not data isn't really part of their life. What we've said is, it is, right? It's got to be, and, and we, we've been building pipeline uh, data models and looking at that for years. What the clouds enable us to do is just look at the problem and have more agility and elasticity. Mm -hmm. and it, you know, to, to answer those questions more than we could have before. Right. All right. So we've always known we needed the data and we wanted to ask questions about it, uh, but now we're able to consume it mm -hmm. and actually ask questions <laughs> about it and contextualize that right. information. Right. And then of course the, the next step is it's one thing to, to collect the data, analyze the data, get some insights, but then if you then you got to act on those right. insights. And that's that's right. kind of and the last mile, right? Really well placed because we like to act on the data on behalf of our customers as well. So All right, shameless we're, plug. We're getting the hook here, but I, Jason, I really appreciate you coming on. I want to just share with the folks that you know, um, Trend Micro is awesome. Sponsor of the Cube. Really appreciate those guys. Shout out. Trend Micro, really awesome. Thanks for supporting our mission. We're passionate, we love doing this, and without your help, we wouldn't be here. So you guys are big customers, so get the plug in for Trend Micro. What yeah, are you guys no, doing with them? Trend's great, you know, we're using their deep security as a service product. Uh, you know, the reason we liked it, same reason, we don't want to build data centers, we also don't want to manage a lot of the you know, transactional security related stuff. We want, we want experts to manage that for us, we don't want to be that. But we care so much about the security of our customers' data because of the, their critical infrastructures. We, we want to secure them. So Trends helped us to, to secure those and get relevant information. We knew cloud, we knew that. But one of the problems with cloud is, just like in virtualization like we saw in you know, the early 2000s, is there's this amazing amount of sprawl, right? What deep security as a service has done for us is be able to, de to detect that sprawl, see it, and make sure we're protecting it. So it gave us just the ability for one pane of glass. Here's our security posture, here's what we're looking at. And, and, and I don't even have to go to the pane of glass, it lets me know ahead of time, right? So I, just, I, I make sleep so much easier. better at night. Yeah. Awesome, well Trend Micro is awesome, and again, your job is to be in the business of doing what you got to do, That's right. and you got great, great partners. Uh, Trend Micro is one of them. This, of course, they support theCUBE, we love them. Uh, guys, thanks for watching this segment. We are live here in Las Vegas for Amazon reInvent, their premier show, second year here, grows every year. Big force, Amazon is going to be written in the history books, in my opinion, it's probably the, the moment in time where things got modernized and IT became just like a utility. Again, this is theCUBE, we got it all here live, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We'll be right back after this short break.